Hey, thanks for coming to 10 Minute Philosophy. Over here at this channel, we look at all types of questions, but today we're going to look at one question in particular, and that is why you should be watching this channel in the first place. Or perhaps we could phrase it as what is 10 Minute Philosophy for? Well, you can use 10 Minute Philosophy for whatever you want to use it for, but know that when I made it, I was making it for teachers. And this is any teacher anywhere for any purpose whatsoever. Now, ideally, I'm thinking that this kind of material would be good for college-level philosophy classes. But anyone who wants to use this content to spread education or critical thinking or the history of ideas, go for it. That said, this video is dedicated to my peeps. So let me talk for just a second to all the professors out there. Now, I'm sure your lecture game is strong, but... Unless it's my wife's voice, I can't listen to one human being for more than an hour. I start to zone out. And this is what happens to our students, too. So whatever lecture platform you're using, uh, PowerPoint or Keynote or Prezi, um, and I hope you're using something because it's the 21st century. Don't just use a chalkboard or whatever. But I make these videos so that people that are talking about fairly dry material will have a little bit of eye candy slash mind candy to introduce topics for them to elaborate on and make it sure that you understand these videos aren't supposed to replace lectures they're instead supposed to be conversation starters so all of them will be focused on just introducing topics very briefly in about a short period of time like I don't know longer than five minutes shorter than 15 minutes I haven't decided exactly how many minutes I'll have to think about it anyways um, to my PowerPoint people uh, just a, a quick 101 in case you aren't already familiar it's really super easy nowadays to put a video into a lecture so you just go to the little video icony button and click it click it click it okay and then you can get it off YouTube or you can get it off your computer I recommend getting it off your computer um, get a copy of it stick it in there and bam you can do whatever you want change it to any size any shape you can also go up to that little playback button up there make sure that you check that out and there's a trim video option where you can cut the video down to rather than the full 10 minutes to just whatever section it is that's relevant to your discussion so if I just hit one term or one idea or one issue or whatever just nip it down to that and there you go you don't have to waste a full 10 minutes of your lecture if you don't want to um, and then if you really want to you can add further layers onto it and block out anything that you want to block out or edit it any way that you want to as long as it's being used for educational purposes I, I really sincerely do not care um, also know that I will be making these videos with uh, white and black backgrounds same videos twice so that whatever the lighting situation is in whatever room you happen to be lecturing in you can take the video that will give the greatest contrast so that it has the greatest visibility for your students and also all of my videos will be offered with or without music um, so whatever works best for you go for it so Next up, I would recommend that you uh, use these videos as links or upload them to whatever platform your school uses, uh, Desire to Learn, Blackboard, whatever, so that your students have these videos as reference points for whatever terms, ideas, topics that happen to be covered that are relevant to the material that you're teaching them. Um, I would also uh, recommend downloading copies of these. If you don't know how, there will be some information in the doobly-doo below for plugins and links to get uh, download your YouTube videos depending on whatever browser you're using Firefox or Chrome or Safari or whatever um, so I would, I would recommend checking that out and if you're using um, Microsoft Internet Explorer uh, I would recommend stop doing that uh, as far as the videos themselves um, know that there's going to be three main types of videos there will be videos that are focused on philosophical terms there will be videos that are focused on uh, core historical philosophical issues. And then, of course, there will be videos introducing various philosophers. I would also recommend that you don't just use 10-minute videos or 10-minute philosophy videos, but dive into the ocean of all the educational videos that are out there. There's a, a cherry-picked list in the favorite section of this channel. I would highly recommend checking it out. And while we're on the topic, I just want to kind of situate what my goals are and where I see that we are as educators at this point. So 
Um, let's just take a little trip through history. Uh, back in my childhood, I was profoundly impacted by uh, the PBS educational broadcasting, educational content, um, like what we had with the brilliant and creative minds of Jim Henson and Mr. Rogers and all of the educational content that really shaped me to be the teacher that I am today. Um, and I feel kind of obligated from the efforts of these creative and loving people to try to do the best I can to try to take education into the 21st century. And, of course, it didn't stop there. Um, with the advent of cable television, uh, educational content has kept growing and kept changing and kept influencing people. And so, really, not only do I think that we have a, a kind of an obligation to take this content and be creative with it, but it's the 21st century. I mean, we've got the Internet Let's do this, right? So that's what 10-Minute Philosophy is going to be about, is I'm going to be trying to provide just a Willy Wonka candy store of uh, mind treats and eye-dazzling goofiness to keep people interested and engaged in the topic of critical thinking. But really, what this comes down to is you. You are the teacher, so you have accepted the responsibility of shaping the future, and that's a serious responsibility so if our generation could be shaped by people that were working with hand puppets seriously we, we we have to take it take this beyond where it's been and put it in a direction that's useful i mean th think about it gene roddenberry was able to create something as influential and as powerful as star trek using technology that's completely inferior to what's in your pocket right now think about that so we really we really don't have any excuse so consider this an invitation. Help me help you help us by taking 10-Minute Philosophy as a tool for teaching and promoting critical thought. Thank you for taking the time to watch. As always, hitting that subscribe button never hurts. You'll always have access to the latest videos, um, and I'll try to keep it fresh and constant for as long as I can until either I run out of Internet or philosophy. Thanks for watching. See you next time.